next generation from Vietnam. So it's Thailand against Vietnam over in this one. Now, Trust, we know lots about. We've seen them for, what, four or five years now. Uh, a lot of these players are pretty well known. But next generation, they're uh, going to have to try and show up and play their best to get themselves even close to that spot. And I can welcome in my co caster at this point, Scant. What do you expect from this best of three, if, if anything? Well, apparently next generation have uh, some male playing for them. So <laughs> if you if you look at the, the nicknames that the players are actually going by, they all have some kind of interesting nickname set up. And they've started the draft with an alchemist pick, which is something I've seen picked a couple of times in Southeast Asia and China recently. And it's actually mostly been doing very well. It's, it's it feels like in a in a small way it's starting to come back. And it's the kind of pick that if they make it work, I feel like even a underdog team beats a a, a sort of favorites team in a matchup. I don't know if you agree with me, so it, I, I think it's it's the sort of draft that I'd I'd want a team like Next Generation, like the, the Vietnamese boys, to go for um, to to beat the maybe the bigger team in the matchup. It's, it's not it, like it's not quite a cheese pick, but it definitely Reserve needs it, your your opponents need to kind of build their draft around the Alchemist and definitely try and outlane him in the early stages rather than. You know, maybe looking for a draft of their own. And we, we know that Signature Trust, they, they do like their kind of global presence. They do like their Queen of Pain there from my pro. And really, I've I've thought about this a lot. And Trust, you know, I've, I've loved, loved the Kells and how he plays for a number of years now. But really, they haven't performed for the past, what, four years since like TI2. It's been kind of disappointing for them, not being able to qualify or win for any of these big tournaments. If there's any patch for the Kells, I think it's this one now, you know, with the with the Spectre being such a such a popular hero. I think I think it's to trust they've got a good crack uh, getting to themselves to uh, Isla and Manila. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. And this bracket actually looking quite good for Signature Trust. I think that other than Fnatic, they're probably the team with the most credentials left in the bracket because the the Philippines teams had their own qualifier and. MVP Phoenix got knocked out in the in I think the first or second round uh, by WG Unity, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, one of the lesser Malaysian teams. So Signature Trust, is, as far as things go, as, as far as the teams that have been around a long time have been through a lot of qualifiers, often get to the last like final four of a qualifier. I think it's just them and Fnatic that are actually left in, in this bracket. So they'll definitely expect themselves to make it quite far. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like you said, WG Unity knocked out MVP Phoenix in the quarterfinals. That was uh, the same stage as this. We're still uh, still in the quarterfinals here, so the winner of this series actually goes up against WG Unity. Try and beat them in the semi-finals, and of course, later on today, at 3pm, so that's in about three hours, we've got Beyond Infinity against Fnatic. The winner of that goes up to play against the Mongols. It's uh, it's all getting a bit interesting, honestly, in the in the C qualifier. But the draft so far, next generation, Odi Enchantress, Wisp banned out. Of course, trust. I do like a bit of Wisp from time to time, but putting out a lot of these heavy nuke heroes, Lion, Zeus, the Roaming Tusk, as well as that Invoker taken away. But they've got this mobility about them. Trust do. Nature's Prophet and Queen of Pain. And I really would not be surprised to see next generation just ban out the Spectre at this point. I'm gonna go for the Chen ban. I mean, the reason they ban the IO is actually the mobility, I think, because if you have a Queen of Pain and Nature's Prophet and IO, your whole team's just everywhere all the time. And Chen is maybe. It's it's not about mobility, but it's a similar kind of pressure that applies very early on in the game. And very interesting to see Next Generation actually pull out the Jakira now, which is a, a hero that in Southeast Asia I've, I think I've only seen TNC pick. I've, I've seen them pick it many times, and it's TNC seems to like the hero so much that. Even though Tiki pretty much always plays carry heroes in mid, he plays Jakira mid as well. So, that, I mean, that says something. One of the stronger teams in Southeast Asia thinks that mid Jakira is like a really big deal. But my question for you would be, can this be a mid Jakira? Like, does, does Alchemist get picked anywhere except for the mid lane? Not recently from what I've seen anyway. Uh, he, he used to be a safe lane hero, you know, back when he built into like Battle Fury and would farm the jungle when all the Chinese teams were kind of picking him up. Safe lane Alchemist was definitely definitely a thing, but more recently it's been about, you know, Bottle, Bounty Rune, and just uh, just beast moding your way through to the Radiance as quickly as you can while your support stack your camps over in the jungle. Um, so do you think sure. this is just like a support Jakira that happens, like they're just picking heroes that benefit from Alchemist buying them Ags later on? Is that, is, is that one of the better Ags, would you say? Not really, no. I mean, it increases the range a hell of a lot, but it's not... Uh, it's not like a Witch Doctor or a Disruptor or something like that, where, you know, the Ags has a massive amount of value added to the spell. 
guess it, it could be the offlaner, right? That's I think EG used to run quite a lot of offlane Jakiro at a stage. Yeah, dual offlane could get work as well. You know, if they go for like a bounty hunter plus Jakiro or something like that. Oh, well, they're gonna pick up a Viper, and this maybe even forces the Alchemist even further away from mid lane. Unless you go like a yeah. Viper Jakiro dual offlane. Ah, uh, we've, you know, back when Undying was a popular pick, people were trying and testing all of these funky kind of uh, Undying dual lanes. There's Undying Jakiro, Undying Viper, Undying Nature's Prophet, Undying Tusk, and you basically just pick these super annoying heroes that can out harass and out damage pretty much anyone in the lane. Definitely a possibility, but trust they go back for their Drow Ranger. Lakel's picking up the Drow, and they've got three ranged heroes already for them. Yeah, and uh, Queen of Pain and Nature's Prophet, I mean, I, I was talking about TNC earlier, these are kind of the two, I, I would say the two favorite cores to go with the Draw Ranger and a Draw Draft that we've seen, certainly in the Southeast Asian region in the last year, so it's going to be more or less the ideal Draw Draft for their ones, and I think a Draw Draft is maybe good against an Alchemist Draft, because you apply that pressure, you group up quite early, and you can really exploit the fact that the Alchemist is still farming to get online. Really depends, if, if the Alchemist gets the perfect first 15 minutes, then it'll already be online before the draw strat is, is, you know, knocking on their door. But the Alchemist is a little bit slowed down, and it might never be able to catch up with the with the pressure from all the towers going down by the, the draw strategy. Yeah, with nowhere safe to farm, it's going to be difficult for him to actually get into those bigger items. Now, with Drow Draft, very often we see some kind of, you know, a good initiation hero or some kind of tanky hero that can jump into the thicker things. Earth Spirit would have been decent just to be able to roll in and start off the fight. But it's Southeast Asia, Spirit Break is always the one that comes to mind. You know, you run yourself across the map, you charge into people, and you just look for those openings wherever you can as that support <laughs> roll. Not sure what trust they're going to be exactly looking for. Jeez. Uh, you know, we, we've been talking about like lane dominance and lane control and out harassing and all that nonsense for the next generation, and Lich just adds even more. That's that's insane. So this is definitely Jakiro core role. Ah, it, it could be Venge core, I guess. I think I'd prefer the Jakiro core here. Yeah, I think it's Jakiro core. Um, I want is this? I mean, it's it's still very difficult to guess what the lanes ultimately are. It's your, I mean, Venge adds a bit to lane instead of. In, in terms of like roaming potential, Alchemist bits just farms, but the other three heroes they picked are insane lane dominators and yeah, I'd, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how they set up while it is the Phoenix that's the last pick for Venture Trust, yes, it's not really a hero that goes in first, it is a hero that benefits from the draw aura very well though and it's got a lot of damage, as we've, as we've seen recently in the last couple of months, Phoenix is a lot of spell damage actually from the Sunray, but also going to have the, the physical damage thanks to the draw ranger. I completely forgot about that. Of course, trust Jabs loves his uh, loves his Phoenix, and with uh, with this Drow, you're absolutely right. Not only is Phoenix good at trading hits with supports already, with like fiery spirits, and just you know one v oneing them pretty much. But with a Drow aura, he can demolish and maybe even look for kills on them. That does put Boom Bell on this Nature's Prophet though. Oh, so, interesting thing about Trust is Boom Bell pretty much exclusively plays their Nature's Prophet, and they switch back and forth between Jabs and himself on his support and offlane role. I'm just wondering what Jabs' plan is here. Is it going to be the dual lane with the Furion up at top? Uh, I, that sounds about right to me. I mean, he, he, he might stop and see how NGE are laning this because I mean, we're not entirely sure either. And I feel like, depending on the way the enemy team lands, that's probably where he'll put himself. Get some intel as early as you can on this NGE lineup. Do we know what players play which roles? Oh no, I, don't, I mean, I was going to ask you, I know you traveled <laughs> to Southeast Asia at some point in your life, have you Have you been to Vietnam? Is I that... have not, I've not been to Vietnam actually. Is that, is that one of your regrets? Uh, I don't know if I regret it, like, uh, not going to camp, like my dad went to Cambodia a couple of years back and I had the opportunity to go with him and I, I kind of regret that, but that's because I had the chance, right? Not not going to Vietnam, I never really thought about going there, so I don't regret not going. It, it, would, it would be nice, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love to go, but uh, not really a regret such. Yeah, fair enough. I've, I've, I've heard it's really cool there. It's quite a nice place to go visit. And there's, obviously there's a lot of history, so there's a lot you can learn about the heritage, culture. And the food. Like any time, any time I think about Southeast Asia, I just think of the food scan. That, that's that's all I've got on my mind. 
Oh. Is that is that what you think is going to be the biggest highlight for those traveling to Manila in the coming months? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. 